My name is Martini, I'm currently a solutions architect at AWS and I've been working here now for about a year and a bit. So what I wanted to do in this video is just sort of like recap and review the year that's gone by working at AWS, especially coming out of university straight into AWS as a graduate. I didn't actually do the graduate program. Unfortunately, I'm not going to talk too much about like tech you, but similar experiences nonetheless, and just talk about how this year has been. And also just to like review sort of what I think could have gone better this year. All right, first things first. Have I enjoyed this last year? Yes, I have enjoyed it because it's been really sort of eye-opening to see the wider scope of tech. Being a solutions architect, you really do get involved with so many different parts of technology from databases to machine learning, to serverless technology, traditional compute, migrations, databases. There's just so much stuff within the landscape of tech that you get involved in. It really helped, it really helped me anyway, to get a bigger picture. That was really, really interesting. And I've, I've really enjoyed that. Also being a solutions architect, you get to do like a lot of evangelism events. So going to speak to people, go speak to customers, go to do events, which I personally have enjoyed. Like I think I've spoken at over 10 different universities, uh, speaking to students and just talking about AWS. I personally enjoyed that. For me, it's just, it's quite satisfying to help students and help them sort of grow in their own careers and grow and show them like what they can do and help them achieve that. So that's like something I enjoy. I can imagine, I fully appreciate if not everybody enjoys that, but be as a solutions architect, you don't have to do it. You can kind of mold what you want. The team, the team I'm in are amazing. I've learned so much from them. They're really just ex experienced people. And actually to say like, most of the people in AWS are so clever and smart that like, it genuinely feels like I'm working with really smart people. And that's like really good for me because at university, I don't know about you, but I was like, I'm the smartest one, blah, which I wasn't, I really wasn't the smartest one. But like really at AWS, I feel like I'm working with really smart people. I'm learning so much from them. And I think that's like probably the most important thing um, as an early career person, because that's really what you want to do. You want to like absorb the wisdom from all these other people around you so that you become smarter and like, you know, work smarter, not harder. You learn that from their mistakes and you get their wisdom and that's going to help you. And lastly, like be as an actual solutions architect, like what do we do day to day? Well, we help customers with their queries on AWS cloud and help them try architects and solutions. Um, essentially, we take business problems, turn that into technical requirements and then usually build like a POC, like an MVP or something. And that for the most part is probably like, I really enjoy the latter part of building, like actually building an MVP. Unfortunately, I haven't had too many experiences actually doing that. I've, I've built a few POCs, but personally, I would like to have built more POCs in the last year. So hopefully this year, that's something I'm gonna do, but um, that's like the core of your job is doing that. Number two, do I regret becoming an AWS solutions architect? Why would I regret it? Let me have a think. So potentially like, looking further down the line about what I personally want to do, which is sort of build products and build solutions, that's where I really, that's where I sort of I see myself becoming. Um, and actually, I do think the solutions architect role is very aligned to that in the sense of you get to learn all these different tech products and build loads of MVPs really quickly, um, which is really fun. But what I have noticed is that as a solutions architect, you're very technical. You need to learn about, you, you kind of need to know all 200 AWS services, more or less. Um, obviously, you need to know the core ones a lot more, but there's 200 or so services. So that really expands your knowledge. What happens, in my opinion though, is that you, because you're also a bit salesy and you need to speak to customers, you know a little bit about technical stuff, you know a little bit about speaking and doing presentations and doing the salesy stuff, but you're not, in my opinion, like amazing at one or the other. And obviously that's because I'm quite junior at the moment. There's some other solutions architects that are super level 400 in depth in the technical area. Um, but for me right now as an early career, I'm just not quite there yet. And that for me is probably like a little bit of a problem. And you know, I'll be honest, that is something that frustrates me a little bit because I want to get really technical. So compare this to, let's say if I was a software engineer and I actually got to build out a product into production and really get into technical depth about it, but only focus on that one thing. However, I must say though, I would hate to only be technical and not sort of have this uh, skill set of being able to speak to people and speak to customers. So there's like a balance. Um, and I am still trying to find that balance of where I sort of am on that spectrum. Um, I don't think I've quite found it yet, but that has been enjoyable. So do I regret being an AWS Solutions Architect? Absolutely not. I think as an early career, it's probably the best move I could have made to be able to like figure out what I wanted to do in tech and what I enjoy. And I, you know, as I mentioned, I still don't know what that means, but I know more than I did last year. Yeah, it's really like an eye-opening role, I think, as an early career, especially if you, if you know you're into tech and this is the space you wanna be in, I really think it's a good space to just understand like, all different paradigms of tech. Well, when I say all, I'm like in my eyes. And you know, 
there's a lot of things that's probably quite a naive comment but for me it's really helped me just see like all of this other all of this parts of tech and piece them together and see how they work together so that's been really cool number three do i regret working in big tech compared to working in like a startup i think as a technical person coming out of university one of those big questions like oh should i go work in fang or should i go work in a really cool startup where you know you have a bit more responsibility and you're probably going to grow a lot more I actually worked at a startup before graduating university. So in my third year of university, I worked at this really cool startup called Raindrop. And that was, was like an amazing experience because I really felt like I learned a lot. So I have had some experience working at a startup. And albeit it was only around six months, I did think it was really, really valuable. Now, would I have actually wanted to work at a startup straight coming straight out of university? <laughs> it's a hard one. Um, and I don't. I really, I don't, I really don't think I took this with a light decision because I did get some offers at a startup and I also got, and also got AWS. Now, what I would say is that a year later, working at AWS, I get so many recruiter messages in my LinkedIn inbox saying like, "Hey, do you want to work here? We've seen your experience." And I purely believe that is because I've worked at a large tech company. So, obviously, the sort of uh, ceremonious parts and the, um, you know, the big tech aura you know, the big tech energy does come with it and it's really great because a lot of people just respect you more. And obviously when, you know, you go speak to your parents, well, when I spoke to my parents, I'm like, hey, I'm working at Amazon. They're like, oh, cool. Personally now for me, I think having had sort of experience working at a startup and big tech, I definitely would have worked at big tech first and then now go look at some startups if that's what you want to do. Just because you get that, um, you do just get that credibility working at a big tech and I know it's awful and it's, that's not what life's about. I fully understand that. But it is just nice to have that comfort. And for me personally, going, going to university, because I didn't actually study computer science, I studied electrical engineering, it was like a really big win for me, which I'm like really proud of because I, I got to work in big tech, um, which was just a nice achievement. However, once you've done it, you've gone through it, you kind of just like, nah, it's okay. It's like, whatever. It's just like working at any other company. And the key thing I think is, as long as you're learning, um, and gaining more valuable experience, then do whatever like that. Do whatever gives you those opportunities and experiences because that's the most important thing. As soon as you stop learning, I think it's time to quit. I think it's time to end it and move on to the next thing. But yeah, I definitely would have gone to AWS. Because, ah, fire alarm. Sorry about that. Cool, so I hope that was useful. And I know I'm just ranting at the moment. I'm not reading off a script. I'm really just thinking off the top of my head. But I um, hope it's useful in some capacity. Question four, what's the best thing that's happened so far in AWS? I think the best thing that has happened to me in the last year is really just like being in that corporate environment and trust me I hate corporate I find it so annoying but being in a corporate environment to just grow in like the career like if you speak to some boomers or millennials they're gonna be they're probably gonna say something like ah oh, Gen Z you know we don't work we don't do anything we're so lazy firstly that's utter nonsense like get out get out of here but what it has done is just taught me a bit of like tenacity, like working nine to five and actually being able to like do the job. I'm sure a lot of you can uh, relate, but university was so unstructured for me. Um, and so it was really nice to have this like timetabled schedule and just getting like into the flow of your career, I guess. So I really enjoyed that part, that aspect of AWS. And obviously like the learning experiences, you know, at AWS there's so many different types of training. If you want to do training and speaking to people, presentation, sales, cryptocurrency, blockchain, serverless, EC2s, like databases, machine learning. There's just so much training, which is really great. And obviously, you know, working at such a large company does offer you that. So that's been great. I've obviously also really enjoyed the discount you get on Amazon Prime and Amazon Fresh, which is, you know, if that's not a reason to join and I don't know what is, but I have enjoyed that. So I really think like a combination of that experience has been amazing. And actually the entire experience so far has been really good. I've also really enjoyed starting this YouTube channel. So if you've enjoyed these videos, you found them useful, please give me a comment and you know tell me what you like, what you don't like, so we can make this channel better. Thank you. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but whatever. I think it's really important to not just focus on what's going like well, but also what's not going well. I don't know why I did this, but what's not going so well. Question five, what's not going very well? I, personally for me, I think that the solutions architects role, because it has that split of technical and non-technical, I find that I don't get the opportunity to just really dive deep into technology enough. And what I mean by that is not like, I, I can still do workshops and immersion days and read about this stuff, but for me, what that means is that I want to actually build something into production. So for example, if I'm working on a web application, I don't want to just build a proof of concept. I want to go to full mile and build a proof of, and build something into production, have actual customers use it and reiterate on it. I really miss that part of like 
being an engineer because that for me is like what I'm most interested in. And like, I won't, I won't lie. I don't think it's the solutions architectural's fault because when you know I signed up, I knew that was sort of within the job description. This is sort of just me personally now reflecting in the last year. What I would say is that SA Role has helped to get those skill set to get there. Actually thinking about it, I have built this web application internally where we actually built it into production. So we had to go through apps, application security and go through all of those sort of like checks and stuff, which has been really cool. And that was probably been like the best part of the my year so far at AWS is like doing this project. We had thousands of users using it internally. It's basically like a monthly competition where users can log their activities and their wellness um, activities. So it's, that's been really cool. But it wasn't like an actual team of like software engineers and actual problems managers and going through the sprint life cycle. And maybe I'm like romanticizing and glamorizing what software life cycle is, but I don't know, I just really want to try and do something like that and get into production. I think that's probably been like the least favorite thing in the last year for me is like not having more opportunities to build stuff into production and actually go the full mile, which is what I want to do. Number six. Now this isn't really gonna be a question, but this is gonna be more a thought exercise for what's going, what, what I'm looking forward to do this year. This coming year has been great. Uh, well, <laughs> how can this year have been great? This coming year, I really want to sort of focus and hone in on my skill set and what I think I'm really good at. So at the moment this year, I've just been given some of my own customers to look after, which is great because I get to dive deep into that and really like build a customer relationship, help them with their architecture questions. But what I really want to do as well is go deep into some technical stuff. So like really learn what's happening with AWS Lambda and what's happening under the hood or with DynamoDB. Learn how to do like NoSQL database modeling, sorry, single table database modeling and doing stuff like that. It's really complicated, but that's kind of what I want to do. I also want to like obviously film many more YouTube videos. I've said in the last video or the next video that we're gonna try and release like a tutorial once a month to help you actually build real cloud projects. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and just release more content, be it an AWS blog post, some more videos on just tech stuff, really. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really have a well thought out plan as I should do. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope that was sort of useful and valuable to you. I, I'm looking forward to this year. I know it's already February, but wow, New Year's can start whenever. Bye-bye.